I'm here with Arjun Malhotra. He is the co-chair of the Global uh, Pan IIT Alumni Board, uh, along with uh, uh, Rajat and uh, Oman um, Gupta. That's correct. Um, Arjun, we need to understand first, um, as the Global Board for Pan IIT Alumni, uh, you know, there are certain policies and certain guiding principles, you know, that you set forward, and you know, other folks come to you looking for some advice. Just want to understand for the audience out there, uh, what do you guys do as a board? Okay, so the global board pretty much has an advisory role. Uh, the uh, there's some level of action taken by the North America board, or the India board, or the Singapore, or the you know the chapters in uh, Singapore, Australia, Japan, wherever they are. Uh, we basically uh, try and give common policies that they can all use like I branding. The three things that Pan IIT does at the global level, uh, branding, alumni services, and advocacy. So we try and work with uh, uh, the chapters, so to say, for us, the chapters, whether it's India or North America or wherever, to, let's say, come in, uh, now when new IITs are being opened, how do we get faculty, how do we ensure the new IITs uh, come to a certain standard, and we try and work with the government to, the word influence is wrong, but to try and advise them or try and give them inputs as to what should be done. Uh, you know, it's up to them to take it or not, but that's basically some of the things. The advisory services at a simple level would mean when Katrina hit, uh, there were a number of IITians who pretty much became homeless, uh, lost everything they had, had to be some of them had to get a new job, some of them had to even be given laptops if they were students. And so Pan IIT has uh, got together and did some of that work. Uh, now it doesn't matter which IIT you're from, uh, but if I can help you as an IIT, and that's what we try to do. So we thought that that should go across uh, campus boundaries, and that's really what we try to do. So I want to stretch it beyond uh, what you do for the alumni, is that there are alumni who is who are uh, predominant in many industries mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the emerging um, young uh, IITians who come out from India or are studying here in American universities, they look up to these guys as mentors and uh, um, are there any uh, such initiatives taken by uh, the Pan IIT group as a whole to help uh, either in professionalism or in entrepreneurship? Uh, you know, we don't do that at, a, at the global board. But definitely at the, I know North America, if I can use that, or in India too. Uh, I know that uh, Pan IIT works with different uh, city chapters. Uh, for example, here in Chicago, uh, this uh, conference we're having here is a good example of younger people coming in and interacting with people and looking for role models and mentors, whatever word you want to use, uh, of people in the Chicago area who they can work with closely, right? Uh, that happens all the time. And sometimes it goes beyond Chicago. People here might want to talk to someone in California or someone in New York, depending on what kind of industry you're looking at. And definitely those connects happen. I've got to say that it's much more campus oriented, that an IIT Kharagpur alum would uh, talk to an IIT Kharagpur person. And 90% I think would happen at that level. But there's a 10% that happens across campuses too. So that's how it works. It, it, it seems to work quite well. So the, the the, the balance between professional uh, uh, executives and entrepreneurs uh, is the focus more towards you know uh, helping them professionally come up in, in, in major industries and verticals rather than more focus on entrepreneurship or when it comes to entrepreneurship they have to go to an organization like Thai where you're also the chairman of the board. Uh, well, I guess, you know, entrepreneurship, Thai probably is better equipped, if I use that term, to be able to give the kind of ecosystem and support that is required by an entrepreneur coming in. But there's no reason why they can't come to IITians, who may or may not be members at Thai, charter members or whatever. Uh, and actually, there's a fairly large overlap. Uh, between uh, Thai members, uh, there's a fairly good percentage of them, at least here in North America, uh, that are IITians. Uh, but people come to the most appropriate person they can go to, and that if they come to me, for example, as an IIT alum, I would then take him to the right kind of person, and I would take him to the right kind of organization, if it's Thai, to get him into an ecosystem that will help him grow. You know, let's put it this way, I don't know 
uh, there are probably a thousand technologies I don't know well enough to be able to get intimate in terms of what I can tell the person for uh, those details. Uh, I can give a very 5,000 or 10,000 foot view and so there when you're mentoring someone you put him with the right person and try and make sure that the advice they get, they t I mean they take it uh, realistically because lots of time you get advice it doesn't it's good advice but it may not apply to you because the person who's giving you the advice hasn't looked at you as a person uh, so you know you try and work with them to get that done you know uh, most of the folks like you and Rajat and Desh are very accomplished people um, and obviously you know a lot of people like myself look up to you for many things in terms of uh, you know role models and mentoring uh, but personally for you uh, where do you want to see IT, you know, go in the next five years. What do you want to accomplish, or see the organization accomplish? Yeah. So I think you know we are lucky, blessed, whatever word you use, uh, that we have a very, very powerful image today compared to what we had earlier. Uh, I think uh, people take us seriously, and I was just talking to the India folks, and they were telling me you would be telling me that I would be surprised how seriously they're taken when they talk to uh, the government today or people in authority and that we need to get a little more in depth into some of the recommendations that we give not just give it superficially as we used to because we thought no one really cares if they really talk about it then we'll go to the next level but the specifically at this conference a number of people have talked to me and said we better start going a little more in depth when we give recommendations because people are expecting us uh, to have seriously thought about it before we give it instead of just saying hey we should do this and say okay let's give the recommendation and in fact uh, talking to Sam uh, he wants us to go a step further and actually do an action plan uh, to get some of that done I think we have a chance of, I think we've set an image for institutions in India that you can do this. It's very much like entrepreneurs or the IT industry had done for people. I think it's now up to us to work with uh, uh, the government and everyone else to try and make sure that the next 50, 100, whatever number of colleges come to this level. And I can tell you this, that it's not for shortage of good students. The problems are elsewhere. Some part of it is infrastructure, some part of it is quality of faculty, quantity of faculty, some part of it is confidence level of people who graduate. And I think we can play a role in helping them reach that stage. Now whether we'll achieve those objectives, uh, whether it's 50, 100, 1000, I don't have that. But I think we should set that and try and get a lot more people, a lot more engineering colleges to come up that chain and be known like the IITs, you know, I think that would be uh, what I think we could do in India. Arjun, on that note, thank you for sharing your thoughts, appreciate your time. Thank you, thank you.